Hey guys, let's talk about tonight's episode, and I really enjoyed this episode. Um, a lot of stuff went down, and it was kind of crazy from the start. Right off the top, we had some guy break into this prison. Well, he didn't really break in, but he got himself arrested so that he could um, basically give these sharp, like, um, I guess, fingernail pieces to Turner, who was one of the um, bad guys from many episodes ago, and he was taken down by Arrow, and he had been in prison ever since. And um, one of the things that he was broken out of prison for was so that he could retrieve this prototype of the earthquake machine that um, Malcolm Merlin had made back in season one. And he was going to be paid like $10 million to get it to this guy who was going to then give, sell it to another guy. And um, that was the whole plan. And of course, Oliver wasn't going to let this happen. And he was going to do whatever he could to stop it. Now, while this was going on, Oliver was also trying to do everything he could to teach Roy a thing or two about how to control his anger and the power that he has. Now, guys... I say this every week, but this week it was a little bit ridiculous. So that's why um, I'm glad that the, the show ended the way it did. But when um, Arrow was teaching Roy how to, you know, slap the water and control himself and do all that stuff. I mean, he was literally standing like not even a foot away from him. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you don't know that that's Oliver. I mean, come on. It was just, I know I'm supposed to be able to clear my mind of that and that the, you know, the eye mask and the hood is supposed to be enough to disguise Oliver, but it just isn't. I mean, his face is lit up plain as day and it's just so distracting. So anytime he's like, oh, you're talking about Thea? How do you know Thea? And I'm like, oh my God, this is just too much. So guys, I'm very happy to say that when Oliver revealed himself to Roy, you know, obviously he did it in a, in a moment to one, stop Roy from pummeling um, Turner, and um, two, so that, you know, he could help save Starling City by, you know, punching a hole through that, um, the crate that was there, which was housing the, um, the earthquake machine. So, you know, he takes his hood down, he shows his face, and of course, Roy is stunned that it's Oliver, and it's been Oliver this entire time. So, you know, it'll be nice to see what happens moving forward. Obviously, you know, Diggle and Felicity are a little bit skeptical because the whole point of this episode was just trying to control Roy's temper and his anger because he's been angry for a very long time. And so, you know, their fear is that he might not be able to keep this on the DL <laughs> very well. But, you know, at the end, he was warned by Oliver that if he tells anybody, especially Thea, you know, he's basically as good as done. So it'll be interesting to see how that moves forward. Um, in other news, we had uh, Moira, who it looks like now is going to be running for mayor. And I guess at first I was like, really, this you know, who's going to want to trust her. But, you know, I did like the conversation that Thea had with her, which was, you know, this is sort of your way of um, giving back to the city because, yes, you were um, manipulated and you were basically kind of blackmailed into doing what Malcolm Merlin wanted. Um, but now this is your opportunity to help the people of Starling City. So it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out between Sebastian Blood and her. And now we already know that Oliver is still kind of team Sebastian, which I know won't last for very long. And then now that his mom is actually running for mayor, it should be e even more interesting. So um, that'll get really juicy, I'm sure. And of course, we had some more stuff with um, Laurel this episode. And like I had said in the previous episode, you know, she was fired from her job. Now it looks like she's going to be disbarred. She's totally spiraling out of control. She's getting drunk at the club, you know, fine, whatever. And so, of course, when Oliver made that phone call, I knew it wasn't her dad he was calling. I knew it was going to be Sarah. So when she showed up at the end, that was awesome. I was like, this is what I want to see. You know, the big reveal. How is she going to handle that? Will she contain herself? Will she become more um, like she was before, before her world turned upside down? You know, sh should be interesting. I mean, Laurel's not my favorite character on the show, but I think what they're trying to do, one, separating her from the Oliver romance, which was not working, and giving her her own story and... Um, you know, plausible 
spiraling. It all makes sense. You know, she lost her boyfriend. She's lost Oliver. She lost her sister. Her world is just in complete chaos. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens now that Sarah has revealed herself to her sister. It was a good reveal. Um, and then, of course, we had flashbacks to the island. And, you know, one of the things that was going on through this episode was, you know, um, Oliver was really trying to reach Roy because he knows he failed with Slade when they were back on the island. And of course, he reveals that he wasn't the one who told Slade the truth about Shadow. And this is obviously one of the reasons why he has such hate for Oliver at this uh, at this present time. And that and the fact that we found out that um, Oliver put an arrow through his eye. So... It'll be very interesting, of course, once these two get face to face with one another and how that scene's gonna play out. But in this flashbacks, you know, we saw Oliver trying to connect with Slade in a way through telling him that Shadow did love him, not necessarily in the way that he wanted her to love him, um, but she loved him anyway and she wanted him to get off the island. So, you know, he reached out to him in that moment and he also lied by, you know, not telling the truth that he is the one who ultimately got her killed. So, of course, I'm sure it's going to be Ivo who reveals that lovely juicy secret, um, which is then going to set him off in ways that will be awesome to see. Um, but yeah, lots of little things going on in this episode. And then, of course, like in my last review, I was saying that I was wondering when we were going to see the I got the HIVE, the Hive organization, reveal itself again. And we had um, another uh, sighting of Amanda Wal Walker, I think her name is, Waller or Walker. And she shows up at the end with, of course, um, Turner back in prison. And she goes up to him and she says, it looks, she's like, I uh, will need your help and I may have a way to help your, you know, reduce your prison time. And I'm putting together a team, a crew of people. So hmm, who's going to be on this team that she talks about? Because she obviously knows what's been going on with Oliver and Diggle. Um, but we haven't seen her again, so she's very much a mystery on this show, and it'll be very interesting to see what hand she plays moving forward. Speaking of Diggle, I'm feeling like he's being very underutilized the last few episodes. You know, he comes out, he says a few lines, and that's it. Like, there haven't really been any major action sequences with him, haven't really seen him training or fighting or, you know, him and Oliver sparring, you know, and so I feel like we need to get another episode centered around Diggle and some more juicy stuff there because I do l really enjoy the pairing between Oliver and Diggle. I think they've got a great friendship going on. I mean, yes, the felicity factor is always good too. You know, the three of them working together is great, but I feel like he's being a little bit underutilized in the last few episodes. So I'd like to see them step up his storyline. I mean, I know that there's so many characters on this show. So, and it's hard to constantly have, you know, the main ones focused on all the time, but, um, We'll see what happens there. But the other, of course, big reveal is the fact that Mora told, well, Walter already knew that um, Thea wasn't um, Roger's daughter and that she's actually the daughter of Malcolm Merlin. And so Mora, you know, tells him, like, we're going to have to do something about my OBGYN because that, per that, I think it was a she, is the other person who knows that Thea is actually the biological daughter of Malcolm Merlin, and we need to not let her interfere with me running for mayor. So I'm like, hmm, Moira's up to some bad behavior already. <laughs> All right, guys. I had a good episode, lots going on, and I can't wait to see what happens next week. This show, again, is um, one of my favorites. I mean, it's definitely a show that I like watching live. It's a must-see um, time slot for me, and... Um, I'm, I'm always excited to see what is going to happen next week. So let me know what you guys thought of the episode. Please leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, uh, share it with anybody else who you think might like my review. Even if you don't, you know, leave comments. Even if you disagree with some of the things I say, I'm fine with that too. I'm always up for a good juicy debate. All right, guys, that has been it for me. I will see you next week. Bye.